Warning, warning, in this video I'm going to talk about poop and diarrhea and other such bodily functions and I might even swear. So if that's going to bother you, I would advise you to turn this video off now. Alright, I have suffered with chronic diarrhea for a huge chunk of my adult life. It's not something that I ever really talk about with anybody because it's embarrassing and so people don't know. People know nowadays that I suffer with anxiety because I started talking about that when I was 50 but I didn't talk, I, don't, I haven't talked about the diarrhea issue with almost anyone. So the other day I came across bile acid malabsorption. Now anyone who knows me knows that I'm a researcher, like I look into all sorts of stuff and I've got all sorts of bits of information stored in this head, but this was new to me and it's not something I've ever heard of or come across and I'm like why have I not heard of this? Because I'm pretty sure that that is my problem. So I'll start from the beginning. For those, a little bit of background, for those who haven't been following along with my videos, I am eating a carnivore diet, and I've been on it, this is my fourth month, okay, so the, I've tried all sorts of diets over the years, everything, everything you can think of from vegan, vegetarian, raw food, fruitarian, um, the starch diet, all sorts of stuff, um, predominantly plant-based diets, because I thought that that's what was the that was the healthiest answer um people around me think i'm nuts probably i know some of them do um extended family and things because i'm forever changing my diet but they didn't know about the diarrhea side of things and so my driver for changing my diet and looking for answers has always been two two predominant things my weight and my bowel okay so a little bit of history, um, as a kid I always had digestive issues, I was back and forth to the doctor um, and the doctor would decide that I was constipated and send me home with suppositories, which was always a whole bunch of fun. Um, constipation wasn't really my issue, I remember being a bit constipated as a kid, but I always had um, like gas and bloating and... Um, abdominal pain and that was exacerbated by my anxiety because I had I had a lot of anxiety even as a kid so fast forward to teenage years teenage years were a little bit better young teenage years were a bit better I think the whole hormonal shifts and everything kind of make things a little bit better um, for a lot of people that have issues as a teenager um, and so that was not too bad I still used to have a lot of issues though with um, gas and bloating and I remember sometimes coming home and I'd be in so much pain because I'd been just filled with filled with <laughs> filled with gas and um, had been out somewhere and couldn't do much about it so um, so that was my early teenage years still lots of digestive stuff going on not bouts of diarrhea like I was always really susceptible to tummy bugs if there was anything going around and um, but yeah the, the diarrhea was kind of not a huge problem back then but it did happen um, so when I had my daughter, I had my daughter when I was 17, so after I had her, I was in a really bad relationship with her father, so there was a lot going on for me emotionally, um, and the, the relationship wasn't physically violent, but it was violent um, emotionally, and there was, yeah, lots of abuse going on, so after I had her, um, I started having a lot of digestive issues and I think the whole hormonal shift and everything because pregnancy kind of kicks off a whole bunch of stuff. A um, lot of, had a lot of digestive issues, was back and forth to doctors, to the hospital with abdominal pain and they could never kind of really work out what was going on. Generally, they examined me, did all sorts of looking and poking and prodding and then they would inevitably send me home with some antibiotics usually and tell me that I had an infection in my tubes. So there was no infection in my tubes, but it was nothing to do with that area of my body, like when I look back, but that was all they could come up with. So they would examine and think, oh, yeah, maybe appendix, whatever, but no. Then I was checked out for gallstones and all sorts of stuff, but nothing going on there. 
Um, so by the time I was in my so things got a little bit better we we moved to australia when i was 25 i'd had lots of digestive issues i was on a drug called tagamet the doctor had decided that i had dyspepsia um, or potentially an ulcer but i was never checked out for an ulcer i was on tagamet for two years we went to australia the doctor had said to me i should be okay to come off that um and then when we got to aussie i ran out came off it was crook again within a month and so i started using a herb called slippery elm which helped lots my nana had told me about that i'd never heard of it but when i started getting sick again we were in north queensland so i went hunting for slippery elm um, in north queensland in 1990 which was interesting but i found it and started taking that and it helped with my digestive pain and the stuff that was going on so from that point through to age 30, my health really deteriorated generally. Um, I was became massively overweight. Um, I was depressed, anxious, having panic attacks. My bowel, that was when I started seriously having diarrhea and bowel issues. Um, and I was almost like um, agoraphobic, didn't want to go out, stopped driving the car. I didn't drive the car for five years. Um, had lots of stuff going on and the bowel was a huge part of that so where we were living we were living in a little country town in Queensland um, and there were a lot of people like us who had bought cheap land and were living in caravans or sheds um, and building their houses so that's what we were doing and so there was all kinds of toileting arrangements amongst the friends. And because I was having so much issue with my bowel and had all this issue with anxiety, um, it just kicked off a whole different level of stuff because we'd go to visit friends and, you know, if my bowel played up, then I'd have to use whatever kind of dodgy to toilet. They had some. I mean, we had one lot of friends and their toilet sat just behind the shed in the middle of their paddock um, out in the open and with no with no walls we had another friend a lot of friends who had their toilet it was just a little one of those camping frame type things with a toilet seat on it and a bucket underneath and they had it in there they lived in a humpy we called it so like just a little shed dug out kind of thing with a roof over it and they had it in the middle of their living area and so if you wanted to use the toilet everybody had to leave the building so you could go to the toilet so all of that stuff just messed with me and my head and my anxiety and my bowel and because my when I'm anxious it kicks my bowel off as well so um, it's kind of this <laughs> two-way um, street with what's going on so um, then in my early 30s, I really I, I quit smoking and I started exercising, really sorted my health out, lost a whole bunch of weight, 45 kilos I lost. Um, my bowel was a lot better um, because I was in a better place um, and my anxiety was a lot better and so still wasn't perfect, but it was a lot better. Um, what I did do in that time was I started drinking. Uh, when I kicked, stopped smoking, I started drinking and so alcohol became a bit of a crutch for many, many years, like over 20 years. Um, if I was in any kind of social situation, alcohol was kind of a must for me to actually relax. So um, something that, that I haven't added into this is that I was diagnosed with something called pyrolora when I was 50, which explains all the anxiety and stuff. Um, if you don't know what that is, I've got other videos on my channel about my pyrolora adapt diagnosis and I'll, I'll probably do some more videos on that soon now that I'm back into making videos again. Um, so the alcohol kind of became a, a real crutch for social situations. I remember often thinking to myself that I could easily be an alcoholic um, because alcohol was the only thing that just allowed me to relax and feel normal when I was with other people. Um, because pyroluria, part of that is social anxiety, which has been there all my life. Um, so anyway, in so through my 30s wasn't too bad. My 40s, things started to deteriorate again. <clears throat> but um, off and on, like depending on where my health was and everything else. Um, and then when I was diagnosed, so my health started to go downhill at it end of my 40s again and I had to stop exercising I just couldn't it would just wipe me out I'd over exercised for years I over exercised for <clears throat> close to 20 years 
sometimes doing four or five hours of exercise a day because that was a way that I could manage my weight and I kind of became addicted to those endorphins and things so it was all sorts of things I did all sorts from you know aerobics running walking uh, weight training swimming biking you know like um, did some triathlons and that when we lived in New Zealand the last time um, and so yeah that that was another crutch basically for me the exercise um, and a way of managing my weight and so yeah at the end of my 40s my body just kind of went no more can't do it anymore so I basically stopped exercising um, for the most part I was still walking a little bit I think but I had to stop running and um, then at the age of 50 I was diagnosed with pyroluria um, which explained a whole lot of things for me with regard to the anxiety and stuff but the, the bizarre thing when I look back because when I was diagnosed, I went and saw a, do a doctor in Brisbane. His name's Greg Emerson, and he's amazing. He actually lost his license to practice because he was doing the right thing, you know. So he does a lot of stuff online now. Um, but when I went to see him, he asked me why I'd come to see him that day. And I said to him that I started talking about, you know, um, thyroid and menopause. And he stopped me. He said, whoa, 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 whoa. He goes, you tell me the one thing that's made you come here and spend all this money to see me today because he was $500 for a first consultation and his first consultation was an hour. And I sat there and I kind of went, oh, anxiety, because I'd never talked about it to anyone, not even my husband. My husband didn't know, my kids didn't know. Um, it's been there all my life, 50 years, and I never mentioned it to anybody. And so for me to tell him that was pretty huge. So... He, he asked me a whole bunch of questions out of this folder and ended up, he told me, I think you have pyroluria. So that diagnosis made a massive difference. Where I was at at the time, my anxiety was really affecting my life quite badly. But my diarrhea was as well, and I didn't tell him about that. I'm like, why did I not tell him? You know, it, it's I didn't mention it to him. So if I had, there's a very good chance he would have, known about bile acid malabsorption because he was a bloody good alternative functional medicine doctor and I didn't tell him. So he gave me supplements for the pyroluria which helped massively but the diarrhea thing was still there and then the anxiety that was still there still kicked it off and everything so it's still been an issue. So fast forward again to the last few years and Gradually, we've been back in New Zealand now for seven years and the whole anxiety, diarrhea thing has kind of gradually been getting a bit worse as I get older. Um, I'm the breadwinner in our house and so I have to work. And so I work for myself and I see clients, but one-on-one -on -one with clients when you're worried about, you know, having to go to the loo and embarrassing yourself and everything every day is really incredibly stressful. Um, the whole diarrhea thing is incredibly stressful. For people who haven't suffered with this, they have no idea what it's like. If you imagine, if you've ever had any kind of food poisoning or stomach bug where you've had diarrhea and you've had to stay by that toilet because you're worried about, you know, messing yourself or whatever, if you imagine having that every day, every single fucking day of your life, that is what this is and the stress is massive and it doesn't go away and so I pretty much had got to the point where I'm thinking to myself I don't know how much longer I can do this you know I'm 58 and it was really um, really affecting me and so I decided to try the carnivore diet. Um, it's kind of kind of my last last thing that I can try. You know, I've tried everything else, and so I went on the carnivore diet four months ago, or nearly four months ago. The first two months, things improved massively. Um, I was still having a little bit of cauliflower and some berries, and 
by the time I got into the second month, my bowel was really settled. I was really settled. I was feeling calm and grounded. And I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I had days where I actually felt normal. You know, like I was thinking to myself, I feel like other, other people must feel, you know, like this is just amazing. And then I started the carnivore, 90 day carnivore challenge. And when I did that, I removed the, the cauliflower and the berries from my diet. So I thought, right, I'll get rid of all the plants out of my diet. And then things gradually started to get worse again. And so, you know, I've asked the question on the on the group about, you know, diarrhea and stuff, and you get the answers about, you know, fat, the amount of fat you're eating, everything. So I tried playing around with all that sort of thing. To no avail, I tried adding oxalates back into my diet, which helped a little bit. So I, I started adding some um, tea with um, cinnamon and star anise in it that I had been drinking prior. So... Because when you're oxalate dumping, if you add some oxalate back in, it reduces the dumping. Um, so I've done a video on that. So if you want to go and check that one out, if that interests you. So that helped a bit. But still, the diarrhea was a thing. And it just it seemed to be kind of getting worse. And then last week, it came to a head after I'd done a 40-hour fast. Um, I broke my fast at lunchtime and had... Um, just a couple of a couple of um, results with just ground beef and salt and a little bit of cheese. Felt fine. Felt fine. I had a client come after lunch and I'm standing there talking to him and next thing I was like, oh my God. I excused myself and I dashed out of the room and I won't go into detail, but I'm just like, what the fuck? So I almost quit the carnival. I was thinking, well, what the fuck am I going to do? I don't. I don't know how to deal with this and so I jumped online that night and um, I jumped online that night and started searching and came across information about bile acid malabsorption or bile acid diarrhea and when I listened to it was a, um, he, a guy who's I've listened to him before. He's a carnivore. He's a carnivore diet. I think he's a, I don't know if he's a functional medicine doctor or a nutritionist or naturopath from the UK. And his channel is EO Nutrition. And he was talking about this and how this is the reason why often fiber helps. Um, because most people that go onto the carnivore diet, they'll have diarrhea initially and then it'll clear up and they can play with fat levels and stuff and that'll sort their bowel out. But for those who have that's going on um, for longer than that, it's often bile acid malabsorption. And those for those people like myself who've had chronic diarrhea for years, 30% of us, it's apparently bile, bile acid malabsorption. That's the problem. And so I was like, oh, my God. And so he, he said that the way he treats his patients with us is um, – he puts them on there's a few different things um that he mentioned was milk thistle berberine um ascorbic acid apparently helps with some people um and there was something else as well so i thought right i'm going to order some milk thistle so i've done that um hopefully that's arriving today but i've been digging into this and doing a lot of research um since then trying to work out what this is how it works how to fix it naturally because i watched a video um a couple of days ago of a young girl, she's only 27, and she'd had chronic diarrhea from the age of 13 or 14, um, had been through all the medical system in the UK, um, doctor after doctor after doctor, doing the same bloody tests again and again, um, and she had a diagnosis of IBS, you know, and, and they treated her like she was just a spoiled teenager that just was pissed off because she had a little bit of a bowel issue, you know, and but she was really seriously affected with this and basically it was ruining her life and she talked about how she didn't do things that she wanted to do because of this and, and I've been the same like there's been a lot of things in my life that I would have liked to have done um career paths and things like that but I, I didn't do it because I was worried I could I knew that I couldn't do it because of this diarrhea issue and so um even like over the years, you know, free friends, they get in touch and say, oh, do you want to come here or do you want to do this, you know, and 
you know, friend a little while back. She was like, do you want to come kayaking or do you want to do this? And I, and I make excuses and don't go. And so they, they don't know what's, they don't know what's going on, but I just make excuses not to go because I can't face that. Even the thought of, um, the thought of, you know, like long car drives and things like that are just incredibly stressful. Um, not knowing whether there's going to be a toilet, whether you can, whether there's somewhere you can stop, like getting onto the Auckland motorway and getting stuck in traffic, that sort of thing, just is really incredibly stressful. People who have been through this know exactly what I'm talking about, and those who haven't, don't. Um, so what I've discovered with this whole bile malabsorption thing is that it's caused by... So what actually happens is when your body produces bile, so your liver makes bile, your gallbladder stores it. If you've lost your gallbladder, there's a chance you will have this issue if you have chronic diarrhea because your liver can be pouring out bile acids. The gallbladder helps to control what's coming out. Um, but if you've lost your gallbladder, that can be uncontrolled, and so you can be pouring in too much bile. So if the bile... Normally the bile goes through the small intestine. It, it um, emulsifies the fats and and um, apparently cleans up bacteria in that as well, I think, in the small intestine. And then it's supposed to be reabsorbed, or a lot of it, about 95 or 90%, 7% is reabsorbed back through the ileum, back up to the liver and to be recycled. But when it gets into the colon, um, it's toxic to the walls of the colon and so the colon wants to get rid of it flushes it out and so that's when the diarrhea happens so the thought is that some people um for some people whose ileum is damaged those with um Crohn's disease and that sort of thing this will happen um but for those who haven't it's either the digestive system can be um inflamed and that'll stop your body from reabsorbing or and when you're producing too much bile and it's going that way, it's going to keep things inflamed. So it's kind of a, there's a two-way street as well, like a lot of things in your body. So it's a bit of a downward spiral. Um, so the the key um, things within this are a um, thing called FXR and a, another, another thing called FGF19. So... FXR, I've got some notes here. I'm just going to bring that up so I can read it. Um, FXR is thunosoid X receptor. And so it's a molecular link between bile acid and lipid glucose metabolism. So this is really um, involved in the whole metabolic syndrome. Um, so diabetes and obesity and, and heart disease and all of that stuff that's all kind of linked together. This is a big player in that. Um, and it says the Tharnasoid X receptor, FXR, is a member of the nuclear receptor superfamily and has emerged as a key player in the control of multiple metabolic pathways. On its activation by bile acids, FXR regulates bile acid synthes synthesis, conjugation and transport, as well as various aspects of lipid and glucose metabolism. So when there's enough FXR, so when that's stimulated, uh, um, another thing called FGF19, which is fibroblast growth factor 19, is, also, is stimulated. And so that's a gene, from my understanding, of some sort. And it helps to regulate, but, so those two together help to regulate the bile acid, how much is being produced, and then the reabsorption of that, I think. If I've got this wrong, if somebody, anybody watches this and I haven't quite got it right, feel free to comment below because um, this is just from my, I've been reading through medical studies and things to kind of try and work out how to manage this myself um, naturally. And so um, for those who know me, I don't do doctors, gave up on doctors many, many years ago, unless they're um, a bit alternative like Greg Emerson was. And here in the Waikato, we don't have a whole lot of functional medicine practitioners. Um, so I just I just manage stuff myself and um, I know that if I go and if I was to go and find a doctor and get tested and then everything a uh, normal GP their answer would be either these cholesterol um, binders which there's no way I'm going to take them because my body needs cholesterol or another drug um, I can't think what it's called but man really nasty liver toxic stuff so there's just no way that I'm going to do that so I want to manage it naturally 
Um, so I've ordered some milk thistle. Um, I'm back taking reishi. So we're in my research yesterday, I um, was digging through um, research papers online and came across um, research that's been done on reishi mushrooms, so ganoderm, lucidum, that shows that it's a FXR agonist, which means that it stimulates FXR. Um, or yeah, makes your body create it, or whatever happens. So um, I had been taking reishi before I started on carnivore, and then I stopped taking it when I got onto carnivore. And because I'd actually been quite a bit better off and on for quite a while um, with the whole diarrhea thing prior to carnivore, even though it was kind of still there, you know, off and on. So um, so yeah, back taking reishi. I'm going to take milk thistle, and I've also I've ordered some HCL betaine to try and help to get things digesting properly although my body seems to be digesting my food fairly well um, on carnival but just to help to lower any inflammation and that that's kind of going on there after um, the last couple of months with things just not being right so I also um, have at the moment added some fiber back in so which has made a huge difference so just added a bit of cauliflower back into my diet and if I don't have cauliflower I have some psyllium and so yeah that seems to have helped although my gut has been feeling a little bit inflamed I think with that little bit of fiber so <laughs> go figure but the little bit of inflammation is better at this point than the diarrhea um so yeah, so that I'll I'll report back on how all this works. Um, I'm actually at the moment doing a 48 hour fast, so I finished that my fast tonight. So it'll be interesting to see how my body responds when I eat after this fast. But yesterday felt so much better, just so much better grounded, and today I'm feeling pretty good as well. Um, so yeah, so the whole bile acid malabsorption thing. I decided to make this video and speak about this even though it's embarrassing because people need to know about this and fucking doctors need to know about it and they need to test people for it it that it drives me nuts you've got things like this that they just either don't know or they just ignore it's like what the hell i mean i've got another family member who has got massive has had massive diarrhea issues for over 20 years um, and she's been back and forth to doctors, she's had tests, she's had colonoscopies, all sorts of stuff done, and no one has ever mentioned bile acid, bile acid, bile acid malabsorption to her. Not one doctor. Not one doctor. And I would imagine that that's her problem. She's had her gallbladder removed. So, you know, it, it, it's just, this pisses me off. It pisses me off that things like this are ignored and not taught or not, yeah, not pushed to the medical fraternity. Some doctors know about it, obviously, but I'm guessing a lot don't, or the, the test's not available. I mean, I tried to look to see whether the test was available here in New Zealand or which one, and I've got a feeling that it's probably one that costs lots of money to do, and so they just don't do it. <laughs> um, so, yeah, there's lots of people out there who are suffering with us and who don't know what the problem is, and their lives are just being fucked up by this and like these days especially there's more and more children and young people having these issues um to due to you know crappy diet and all this it's like just mm. so yeah so that's where i'm at with all of this um carnival diet like all the rest that that's why i didn't quit because i'm getting such good results with other things my blood glucose levels are great my blood pressure is great. I'm feeling good. My energy's good most of the time, um, except for the oxalate dumping kind of waves. Um, so I know that I'm on the right track. And but the, di the diarrhea just caught me by surprise last week, and it wasn't good. So, yeah, such is life. Bodies, who'd have them, eh? It's one of my favourite sayings. Um, all right, so that's me. I've got to go and get ready to go and see clients. Um, I will end this video now. Thank you for watching. If you like what I've been talking about, find it interesting, subscribe, share, like, so other people can find this video. The more people like it, the more people can actually find it, um, help to push it up the algorithms because people need to know about this. Um, and share, if you're having this problem, share your problem with other people so that they know 
You know, like I, I talked to a client yesterday um, about this. I opened up about it, and she's had the same problem in the past. You know, and it's like, but people don't talk about it because it's embarrassing. And it needs to be talked about. Okay, talk to you again another day. Thank you for watching. Goodbye for now.